Hey Credit Warriors, Credit Shifu here and we are about to go to the UK in a few days time. I'm getting excited. So this is a video about the two UK British Airways Amex cards, uh, one of which I have, which is the blue one. There's also a black one, which has an annual fee, has a few more uh, benefits than the blue one. And we're gonna go through them, compare them. I know we normally cover US cards, uh, but I think even if you're in the US, you might consider this interesting to see what's available uh, in a different market. So let's go. And uh, first of all, the major difference that you're gonna notice right off the bat with these two cards is that one of them, does not have an annual fee, the blue card, and the other one does. The black card has an annual fee of £195 a year, which is quite a lot actually for what it is, okay, considering that the card does not offer any lounge access or anything like that. Um, to me, that seems like a pretty high annual fee. If you want to put that into dollars, it's about $260 or so uh, per year. So you're sort of looking in the range of the US Amex gold card, okay? So next up, we have the APR. Now, on the website, they have something called representative APR, which I believe is something the EU has forced them to do in some credit card uh, bill that went through. It really doesn't make much sense to me. I just look at the purchase rate, which is 22.9 on both cards. Um, but for the black card, the representative APR is 76%, which is kind of skewed. I think they're adding the annual fee into that and using it as part of the amount of money you'd have to pay. Um, basically, it requires that they make an example of someone spending £1,200, paying it back in equal payments over a 12-month period. Um, so with the blue card, it, it really is, representative APR really is 229 And with the black card, it's 76%. Um, even adding in the annual fee, the amount you have to pay is like £1,500. That's only £300 in interest and annual fee charges. I don't know how they get it to add up to 76%. No idea. Complete mystery to me. But anyway, with UK credit cards, just look at the purchase rate. And with this, it's 22.9% with both cards. Uh, and now we'll just have a look at one other notable fee on these cards. Okay, so in addition to the usual like late payment fee, cash advance fee, that kind of stuff that you'd expect, there are foreign transaction fees on both of these cards, even the one with the annual fee. Uh, so the foreign transaction fee is 2.99%. Even the Amex Centurion in the UK has foreign transaction fees, which is crazy. Uh, my thinking is I'm paying an annual fee. I shouldn't have to pay foreign transaction fees, uh, but in the UK, they all have it. All right. So, um, all right, let's, let's get rid of that negative stuff. And we're going to move on to talking about some of the rewards. So both of these cards apparently offer travel rewards. Okay. Woohoo. We got that ticked. But then they offer none of the other cool stuff that Amex usually offers, like concierge, etc. Yet, they have this little box ticked for world-class service. They offer world-class service. How do I get the world-class service? Is there a phone number I can phone up that that's like the, the world-class service line or something? So it's a little bit strange. It's like world-class service says who? You just made something up and put it there so you have an extra box to tick uh, and an extra thing that you can claim. But it's not really pertaining to any specific thing that the card offers, right? It's just in general, our service is good. Oh, let's put a little box there that we can tick. Um, so I think that's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, moving on. Now we get to the welcome bonus, all right? So the blue card offers a welcome bonus of 5,000 avios when you spend a thousand pounds in the first three months of card membership. 5,000 avios is enough for a one-way flight between London and Paris, uh, just for your information. Um, and but the spending a thousand pounds is pretty high spending. And if we compare that to US credit cards, uh, a card with no annual fee, normally the sign up bonus would be valued um, at about $150, which is at about double probably the value of this bonus. Uh, and the spending would only be about $500. So looking at UK credit cards, we can already see they're only about half as good in terms of welcome offers. Let's now have a look at the black card, which has a welcome offer of 25,000 avios. I call this a tier three card in my five tier credit card system. Um, so, you know, in the US, a tier three card would normally have a bonus of about 50,000 points if points are worth a similar amount to avios or more. The uh, British Airways visa from Chase does have very good sign up bonus. But anyway, back to this. So 25,000 avios. So it's about half as good. Uh, and you have to spend 3000 pounds, which is about $4,000 uh, in the first three months to get that. So yeah, with both cards, the sign up bonuses are about half as good as their US equivalents. Now let's look at point earning. Now the blue card earns one avio per pound spent, and it has no bonus category for British Airways flights, which is strange to me because it's co-branded as a BA card. Um, yet it doesn't offer a bonus, a bonus for British Airways. Uh, very, very strange. The black card 
um, gets you 1.5 avios per pound spent, which is good, okay, definitely an improvement, and three avios per pound spent at British Airways. Now, again, um, if you wanna put this in perspective, compare it to a US card, on the uh, good old Chase Sapphire Reserve, I get three uh, ultimate rewards points per dollar spent on any travel, including British Airways, any other airline, trains, Ubers, etc. cetera, uh, and those uh, points, that's per dollar, okay, so it's actually probably about four per pound, all right, we can add another one because a pound is bigger than a dollar, uh, and I can then convert those into uh, British Airways avios uh, at no cost, okay, so you're getting slightly better in the US and it's on all travel, okay, if you were using the Sapphire Reserve. So even though it sounds good from a UK perspective, it's not really that competitive internationally or with US cards, all right? But yeah, it's good in the UK. Now, the kind of funny thing is though, if you get the Tesco Club Card, which is a loyalty program, it's not even a credit card, you can actually earn uh, 600 avios for every 250 pounds spent, okay? So one pound spent gets you one uh, Tesco Club Card point, and then once you get up to 250 points, you're able to exchange it, okay? That's one voucher. You're able to exchange that for 600 avios. So you're basically getting 2.4 avios per pound spent at Tesco's. Uh, and then on top of that, you could use the BA uh, card, uh, let's say the black card, to get an extra 1.5 for every pound spent. Uh, so you would be getting um, 3.9 per dollar spent at Tesco, uh, per pound spent, excuse me, at Tesco's. Uh, you could also get the Tesco Club Card credit card, which gets you even more Tesco points and use that instead. So it's funny, Tesco Club Card is actually a better way to get avios than British Airways own Amex cards, but whatever. So if you are in the UK, um, in addition to these cards, you can look into the Tesco Club Card if you shop at Tesco's. If you don't shop at Tesco's, if there's one near you, you could consider changing your shopping habits and going to Tesco's because they have this, you know, they're considered, the Club Card is basically considered one of the best ways to earn British Airways avios in the UK. Right, let's move on. Now we're gonna look at some of the benefits and then at the end of the video, we are gonna talk about the one thing which really is great about these cards, okay? The one really good thing. But anyway, first of all, we have some travel benefits. So we have the usual things like um, travel, delay, accident insurance, um, the blue card and the black card, they offer a collision damage waiver so you can refuse the upsell of insurance at car rental places. I used this when I rented a Jeep in Greece, which is very, very cool, saved some money, saved about 60 euros or something. But it's kind of curious, look at this. The blue card actually lists Executive Club membership, British Airways Executive Club membership, as one of the benefits. I mean, that's a free loyalty program that anyone can just join through British Airways, right? You don't need to fork out any money for that or anything. So why are they listing it as a benefit? It's like they're listing it as something you get with this card that other people can't get. No, it's just a free program. Come on, American Express, sort it out, all right? Um, the black card doesn't list that, but anyway. Um, but I'm not really gonna go into detail on these because it's not really that significant. I really wanna talk about the next thing, which is the companion voucher, or I think they're now calling it the two-for-one voucher, okay? So this voucher basically lets you get a second seat for free. We'll talk about the exact specifics of it in a second. First, we'll talk about how much money you have to spend to get it. So on the blue card, you need to spend 20,000 pounds per year. Uh, to get the companion voucher. If you look at my account, well, I, I hardly ever use my card and you can see I'm nowhere near, I think I'm at zero. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's a handy little bar that kind of fills up like a video game health bar uh, in the back end, which will you know show you how much more money you need to spend to get it. So that's a cool feature. Uh, and on the black card, you only need to spend 10,000 pounds a year. So that's much more realistic for an average person on an average salary, maybe, I don't know, 40,000 a year or something, 40,000 pounds a year. Um, it's much more realistic that they'd be able to spend about 10,000 pounds on the card uh, in order to get this companion voucher. And in some cases, this could be a benefit that's worth several thousand pounds. So it really is very worthwhile uh, looking into it, all right? I'll tell you some of the specific things about this voucher. So it's only valid on Avios bookings, all right? It's not for cash bookings. So if you book a reward with Avios, you can then get a second seat free in the same cabin. So if you are traveling first class, it means that second seat will be first class, business class, business class. Um, don't use it in economy, guys. Please don't do that, all right? We, we, we wanna get good value out of it. Remember you're paying, if you're on the black card, you're paying 195 pounds a year for this. You need to make it worthwhile. Now, if you have two vouchers, so if you collect one one year and you don't use it, and then you have another one the next year, you can travel as a group, okay? So you can get another two people uh, onto your booking. You could travel as a four, all right? 
Uh, and if you downgrade or cancel your card, your voucher will remain because you've already done the spending for it. It will not expire until its expiry date, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the catches, okay? The bad things about this. So the vouchers are only valid for two years, okay? They expire after two years, whether it's the blue card or the black card. There must be award availability for two seats in the same cabin on that flight, which can be easier said than done, okay? Especially in business and even harder in first class. Um, I did have a little look um, on some flights. I did find a business class flight, actually London to New York with uh, eight business class seats available. So it can be done. It's not that it's completely uh, difficult to do, okay? It's just that you might not get your ideal dates. That's the thing. You gotta be really flexible with your dates if you wanna find more than one, uh, you know, business class award seat available, okay? And another thing is that it's BA only, no partners. So you couldn't do the booking that I just did. For example, I booked Japan Airlines from Taipei to Tokyo return using BA Avrios. Um, you can't do that, okay? So it's BA only. And the bad thing about that means that if it's BA only, normally you're gonna be departing from the UK. Um, or I think actually with the voucher, you have to depart from the UK, but um, then you're gonna to have to pay the BA taxes and fees because you're on BA flights, um, which are associated with BA flights that go through the UK. Now, there are a few hacks for this that I uh, found. There's a UK website called God Save the Points, which uh, I'll give them a little shout out uh, for this because they had quite a good article talking about how to use this voucher. Um, so they recommend booking 355 days out uh, to you know get early award availability. Um, I'm not sure whether that's that great. I mean, sometimes extra award availability opens up later towards the date. So it really depends, but you know, the kind of the principle, definitely start looking at it early. You can do open jaw flights, for example, returning from a different location. So let's say you, uh, you fly from London uh, to Hong Kong. This is the example they give. And then you travel yourself some other way from Hong Kong to Japan, say on another paid ticket on another airline. Uh, and then you fly back from Japan uh, on BA, uh, you could actually do that and that would still count as a, as a return flight and you could use the voucher for that. I was also thinking maybe you could go from London to New York, do a road trip in the US, end up in the U, uh, in uh, LA, for example, or San Francisco, uh, and then fly back from there. So you can apparently do open jaw tickets. Uh, and then another little hack that they mentioned was that if you depart from certain airports in the UK, they don't charge you as much in taxes and fees as London Heathrow, London Gatwick, the two major airports in the UK. So they named two places, Inverness and Jersey. Inverness is way up in Scotland, quite far north, and Jersey is a little island that's a tax haven off the coast of France, actually, but it's owned by the UK. Um, so apparently these two places charge lower taxes and fees. So I actually did a little bit of an investigation, uh, checked out an award flight. Now I, I searched two flights booking uh, on the same dates, okay, the 10th of December and coming back, I think on the 27th this year. Uh, and so on the London Heathrow one, uh, London Heathrow or London Gatwick, uh, it was 110,000 avios plus 668 pounds in business class, okay? 668 pounds in taxes and fees. Americans are probably like, oh my God, what? This, it's not even a free flight really. Uh, but you know, uh, you're still saving a few thousand because the business class ticket would be like two, two and a half thousand pounds or 2,000 pounds, something like that. Um, but then Inverness to New York, okay? Um, if you start in Inverness, it's only 543 pounds in taxes and fees. So you're saving over a hundred pounds, about 120 or so pounds. Obviously it's kind of weird though, because you have to actually go from Inverness to London and then change planes and go to New York. Um, so you're probably getting on one of the same flights that you would be getting with the more expensive one, um, but you're paying a hundred pounds less, <laughs> okay? Now it wouldn't be worth it if you lived in London, you'd have to go all the way up to Inverness back down to London and then to New York, okay? Just to save a hundred pounds. You probably spend a hundred pounds getting to Inverness, but you lived up in Scotland. Let's say you live in Edinburgh. You might be like, oh, let's get the train to Inverness and we can get a cheaper ticket. It actually might be worth it for you. Even if you lived in the North of England, like Newcastle or something, it may even at a pinch be worth going to Inverness, getting that cheaper ticket uh, instead of getting the flight from, you know, a nearby airport in the North of England. So, you know, it's something to think about and investigate yourself but it certainly wasn't as much saving as I expected it to be. I was expecting, you know, 600 pounds in taxes and fees from London Heathrow and 200 pounds from Inverness, but no, you're saving like 100 pounds. So to me, it's like not that worth it, but yeah, you could check it out, all right? A little bit of a hack, um, tip of the hat to God save the points there. So guys, that's pretty much all the information I prepared about these two cards. 
Um, what's my conclusion on them? Well, I would say that the uh, the blue card, it's kind of a no-brainer, really, uh, because it doesn't have an annual fee. So if you just want an easy 5,000 avios, you might as well just sign up for it, get the bonus. Easy to do a thousand pounds spending in the first three months, right? That's only 333 pounds per month you'd have to spend um, and then you know you could keep the card it's not costing you anything uh, you could use it sometimes combine it with the tesco club card at tesco earn a few extra avios um, the black card i would say it can be worth it if you are definitely going to you know hit the spending for the companion voucher okay i i would say that's really the only way the black card is worth it is that if you're definitely going to get the companion voucher which isn't too hard because you only have to spend ten thousand pounds a year so if you can get that and you know 100 percent that you're going to try and book a business or first class uh redemption and you're flexible with your dates so you can really get the maximum value out of it then you could be saving two or three or four or even five thousand pounds okay through this voucher so it can be an incredible deal if you do the homework and if you're in a position to actually be able to utilize it, which means 10,000 pounds spending, flexible dates, and you actually want to book, you know, a medium to long haul business or first class flight, then it's an awesome deal. All right, guys, so that is my little appraisal of these two cards. Um, obviously, if you're, you know, we don't do affiliate links for cards in the UK, but if you are in the US and you are interested in earning British Airways Avios, uh, the Chase Sapphire Preferred is a great way to do that. There's a 60,000 point sign up bonus that can be transferred into BA Avios at a one to one ratio. So we'll put the link to that uh, below. If you guys want to check it out, please feel free to click in and uh, have a look. Learn more about it. Again, that is a US card uh, for our US audience. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Leave your comments about these cards below. We'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. <laughs>